Hey guys, we John Cage here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Turok for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. I'm going to be using the Xbox 360 version because that's what we had hooked up at the time. I'm going to show you the intro move real quick and then I'll come back with gameplay footage and my review. intro movie. Uh, there's a lot in the store for this game, and that movie was taken completely out of gameplay footage, so it really does look like that. Um, if that really didn't set the stage for this game, I don't know what could for you guys, but it certainly did for me. So let's get straight into the action here, and I'll uh, see what this game has to offer. Alright, so you start off on a spaceship, everybody wakes up out of their sleeping pods, which actually looks like something out of the movie Rocket Man. Uh, you're in the army, as you could probably tell already by everybody wearing the uniforms, and the ship looks uh, pretty well maintained. Um, you're on a mission to a planet, you're not given the name of the planet, but your mission is to bring back alive a guy named Roland Kaner, who is the leader of a rogue squadron of the military called Wolfpack. Uh, three years ago, him and a bunch of guys went AWOL and started their own, I'm assuming it's a mercenary group, but uh, I guess they just kind of weren't happy with the military and decided to leave. Um, Torok is, is brought into this mission because he's a former member of Wolfpack. Now this instantly brings up um, a few tiffs of him being a traitor, but nothing really too major, but you could obviously tell by his facial expressions that he doesn't feel that way. So, uh, maybe he's just trying to bring him to justice, maybe something happened. We don't know, we're not told just yet. However, as soon as the uh, ship's captain, and I'm assuming the military captain, uh, brings up Kaner on the screen, Torok instantly has a flashback where one of the three one-liners happen. Uh, Torok is kind of instantly known for his commando one-liners. But uh, let me show you a short clip of that, and then I'll get back to this. And you're lucky I'm in these cuffs, old man. As soon as that happens, a message comes up over the loudspeaker saying there's an incoming missile, and you're being fired upon by whoever on the planet. You instantly assume that it's Roland Kaner and his men, and you're probably right. I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys, but probably right. So, of course, coincidentally, uh, your ship is brought down to the planet, and you basically have to escape from it. That takes about five to ten minutes, um, and as soon as you get out, another one-liner happens. Okay, I'll live. So that's about 15 minutes into the game, and already we have three one-liners. This isn't bad, it actually kind of gives the game a sort of humor. However, just after that, you walk up a hill, and then this scene happens, and your mission instantly is to find the other half of the ship, and you see it all from the distance, and then you realize what exactly you're getting into, or at least you think you are. What is this place? There, see that smoke? I bet that's where the rest of the ship came down. That's where we want to go. Whiskey cup. So just after that scene, your teammate decides to uh, progress and keep looking. And I'm not going to say too much more. I just want to let you guys know that I was genuinely scared when this happened. Call me a sissy, call me whatever you want. But this actually made me jump out of my rumble seat. Hey, I think I got some... Ah! 
So, needless to say, I did not go after him. Now, about five, ten minutes after that, actually not even, probably, about a minute after that, you find a gun, and then you find a knife. Now, the knife I found was pretty peculiar, because instantly I thought of Manhunt, this being a first-person game and everything, and then I see a soldier walking around. So you would think that any game after Manhunt would have some sort of execution system, and Torok doesn't leave us hanging, which I really like. So check out this execution. Um, this was the first thing, this is the first enemy that I ever encountered in the game, and note that he's a human and not a dinosaur. So this obviously obviously leaves a lot up to debate about whether or not uh, who is on this island, who is on this planet first. So uh, this really adds to the story, or the intrigue of the story. A little bit after that first execution, I was wandering around the jungle a bit, and I met up with the person who was the first one who said that I was a traitor back on the ship. And he, you know, has his one-liner saying that just because they have to work together doesn't mean he's going to like it. Didn't really bother me too much. I was actually kind of expecting him to say something like that. However, it wasn't too long after that that you were thrown into a firefight. Now, this firefight got a little bit annoying. One of the bad things about this game, there's really no cover system, at least that I've learned yet. Um, however, that was only one of the few flaws, and uh, the camera angles get a little bit choppy sometimes. However, as you can see, every time I get hit, the screen gets blurrier and blurrier. I thought this was really, really cool. Um, I don't think I've ever played a game that does that. Um, you'll also notice that uh, blood starts to fill up the screen, kind of like uh, Gears of War. But uh, aiming gets a lot harder when you get hit, which I really liked. Um, you don't seem to have stamina, so you don't really seem to slow down much, but uh, you're able to run for cover and then eventually recover. So here's the rest of that firefight. Uh, it's pretty loud, and it has a surprise ending. So keep watching. T-Rex starts coming at you. Now, you don't actually get hit by it. Uh, it's really just kind of like a demonstration of the T-Rexes in the game. Um, I'm not going to say if there are more than one. Again, I don't want to spoil for you. But it uh, basically just picks up the last remaining guards, eats them, and uh, goes back into the jungle somewhere. And your only path is after it, although you don't see it again for quite some time. Now, of course, this is a Torah game, so there are a lot of dinosaurs in here. A lot of them get pretty annoying, and some of them are really vicious. Uh... I'm not a dinosaur expert, so I don't know the names of any of them. Hopefully there's a bestiary uh, when you beat the game so you can find out a little bit of information about the uh, dinosaurs. If there's not, that's cool. I think it'd just be uh, a really nice addition. So uh, eventually you find a downed helicopter, or at least a, that's what it looks like, uh, surrounded by dinosaurs. So immediately you just start shooting them. Um, by this time you have the gun and the knife, so you're able to do a variety of different things. So I'm going to show you the battle with uh, the dinosaurs that just keep on coming, and you get to do a few really cool things with the knife, and it also shows a bunch of different things with the combat system. Overall, I really like this game. I like the viciousness of it. I like the pandemonium of it. I think it's very well compiled. Um, overall, I'm going to give it uh, four out of Lonnie phases for pretty much everything. Um, so that's the score down there. That's our new Lonnie rating system. And as a uh, meta score, if you will, I'm going to give it an 80. So uh, you guys can definitely pick yours up today. VideoGameCentral.com. I'm Sweet Johnny Cage. Thanks for watching the review.